yes, my name is Jimmy Naman, and today our discussion is about the <coughs> intercellular combinations that may result at the sour end. So, that is how we may be called the intercellular combination. First, we will define what is the intercellular combination. So, it is this is the matter, uh, uh, this is the definition. Metabolic derangement means that metabolic imbalance, metabolic abnormality in the cell leads to accumulate of uh, different substances in cellular, that's important. And our galleys are inside the cell. When that this combination is inside the cell, these are intracellular combinations. A combination of different substances, these different substances may be protein, may be lipids, may be pigments, something else, may be glycogen. So these intracellular uh, substances, these different substances will be accumulated in cytoplasm and our galleys are inside the cell. When that inside the cell, intracellular. And because of the metabolic derangement, is if there is a some metabolic imbalance in the cell, then it will uh, it will leads to the accumulation of different substances in cytoplasm. Our galleys are inside the cell. The pathways there are different four pathways which cause the intracellular accumulation. We'll discuss the first one that is the abnormal metabolism. What is this abnormal metabolism? Uh, if there is something some kind of abnormal metabolism, and then it will leads to the lipid accumulation. It will lead to the lipid accumulation. I would like to give the example to explain this abnormal metabolism. Let's suppose that in our body there is a liver. Well, I will, uh, let's uh, give the example of liver. This is liver. Uh, what the function of liver? Liver collects the lipids from collects the lipids and push it outside of the body. Outside of the body, but with the help of lipoproteins in the, in the shape of a lipoprotein lipids will collect uh, lipids in the form of cholesterol, triglycerides and then it will combine these lipids with proteins which are being formed in liver it will combine these both and it will form the lipoprotein this is lipoprotein so it will form the lipoprotein then these lipoproteins will be expelled outside of the cell. It will be expelled outside of the cell. So what is the function of liver? Liver function is collects lipids and cholesterol from outside and also form some kind of proteins and give them shape lipoproteins and expel them outside of the cell because these have to be exogenous uh, from uh, uh, exercise from cell. But if there is an abnormal metabolism, if there is an abnormal metabolism like that, so the now liver is collecting lipids, but there is no production of proteins. When no production of proteins, then it does mean that live protein will not form, then live protein will not form, then lipid accumulation will be happen in liver. So lipids will be accumulated in liver. So it was the abnormal metabolism. In case of abnormal metabolism, lipids may be stored inside the cell. So they, in case the example was liver. Second is that second pathway is the defection protein folding and transport. You know that there is a production of uh, as proteins and uh, ribosomes inside our body. These uh, ribosomes produce the proteins, and then these proteins are being folded, and after folding, they are being transported outside of the cell. Remember that. This is the physiology that ribosomes are produced proteins, proteins are being folded, and these proteins are being transported outside of the cell. But in case of defection protein folding, now let's suppose that ribosomes is forming proteins simply, normally, but this folding is not normal. This folding is not normal. This has been abnormal. If this folding is abnormal, proteins will be misfolded, and proteins will be misfolded, they will not be transported outside of the cell they will not be transported outside of the cell so accumulation of proteins will take place inside the cell because the proteins are misfolded and they are not being transported outside of the cell so they will be accumulated in our body so in this case defection protein folding and transport it can cause the accumulation intracellular accumulation of protein the third point is important lack of enzymes what is this lack of enzyme You know that in our body there is a lysosome, lysosomal enzymes. What is the function of lysosomal enzymes? Lysosomal enzyme acts on the complex substances which are unsoluble, 
and change them into soluble. Change them into soluble products, which are being easily soluble and not homogeneous. This is a normal case, but but in case of lack of enzymes, if this lysosome of enzyme is absent, if this enzyme will not be present, then it will cause that complex substances will not change into soluble products. So these complex substances will be accumulated inside the cell. So lack of enzymes also causes the accumulation of complex substances inside the cell. So this is the third way by which intracellular accumulation may be occurred. The fourth one is the in fourth one and last one is the injection of indigestible material. That's important. Indigestible material. Let's call that this is a cell. And when this cell will engulf some substances which are indigestible, like that, this is the, let's suppose that this is the TB, which is the most common example is the ingestion of indigestible material, tuberculosis uh, bacterium. So this is a bacteria, then it is being engulfed in the cell. So now this is inside the cell, but this is now being, not being, this is indigestible. So cell will not be able to digest it. So it will be accumulated inside the cell. So it will cause the intracellular accumulation of exogenous substance which is taken from outside example is the TV, TV is the fast example and just AIDS. So these are the ways by which intracellular accumulation may occur. Now I would like to give some examples of intracellular accumulation. The first one is lipid accumulation. Lipid may be accumulated in our body. The example, first example is fatty change in liver. I have just explained there. I, I have just explained there. But basically, what happens in the in this case that is like for the liver, liver collects, you know that collects cholesterols and at another hand in the liver there are ribosomes and these ribosomes are present on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. They will produce the proteins and then these proteins will be combined with the lipids, cholesterol and they will form the lipoproteins and these lipoproteins will be excreted outside of the cell means that they will be eliminated from the cell. This is a normal case but in case of fatty change in liver, what will happen? You know that liver, liver will collect this cholesterol, but there is a cell injury, there is a free radical cell injury, maybe anything else in the liver. Cell injury will cause the swelling of rough cardioplasmic radiculum. When rough cardioplasmic radiculum will be swelled, then it will cause the detachment of ribosomes. We have just explained earlier in this, lab, in this, in this chapter. These will be detached. When ribosomes will be detached, then there will be no production of protein because now there is uh, ribosomes are being detached from rough endoplasmic reticulum. So proteins will not form, but cholesterols are being collected. When these are being collected, then proteins will not present. When this cholesterol will be not will not be changed into lipoprotein, protein, so these cholesterol will be accumulated in the liver. So it will cause the fatty chain in the liver. So it was the example of fatty chain in the liver. What will be the histological structure of this case? Let's go that this is a cell, uh, sorry, a tissue, uh, liver slide, liver tissue, then it will cause something like that, not red, but I am making it red in the cell that there will be a chalky like appearance of fats, like that. These are the fats inside. You know, you know that this is a white, white, yeah, I'm going to suppose that is a tissue, not white at all, but inside at some places you know that this is white look at in these cycles like this is a white this is white this is white this is white this slides will show that inside the liver these sides will be whitey whitey because of the fats fats are being accumulated then fats accumulated calcium will also come on it okay. calcium calcification dystrophic calcification because calcium is this chalky like appearance to the liver so these will find the whitey whitey Slides, body body cells will, get, will, will uh, show expressly fatty change in the liver. Next is example is the arteriosclerosis. What is arteriosclerosis? It's also a lipid accumulation inside the cell. What is this arteriosclerosis? In case of arteriosclerosis, let's call that this is a blood vessel. 
Uh, in the blood vessel, there are some smooth muscles. Here and here, smooth muscles. So it will cause the accumulation of the, the it will cause the accumulation of ligaments will form the plaque here, here, and here, and maybe here also. It will form the plaques. What, what in this case, uh, there will be that uh, cholesterol, cholesterol accumulation, cholesterol accumulation in smooth muscle cells. Plus also the macrophages, macrophages of intimal, intimal layer of aorta. This is the definition of arteriosclerosis. There will be the formation of plaque. Cholesterol will be accumulated in the smooth muscle cells of the aorta and macrophages of intimal layer of aorta. Means that there will be the accumulation of some cholesterol and they will form the plaque in the vessel in the aorta. Uh, this uh, formation of plaque will be like that. If you look at this, this will be like a foamy type. It will give the foamy appearance. So basically, what is arteriosclerosis? Arteriosclerosis is the cholesterol accumulations in the aorta. Simply a uh, cholesterol accumulation, liquid accumulation in the aorta and in the slides it will give something like that for me appearance the second example is xanthomas xanthomas is same like that there will be the cholesterol accumulation but in this case here it was an aorta but in this case xanthomas it will be in skin and in xanthomas it will be in skin instead of the aorta it will be in skin and tendons it will be in skin and Tendons, uh, it will, uh, here it's more in the smooth muscle cell, but here it will accumulate in subepithelial connective tissue. Subepithelial connective tissues. So, what is xanthoma? Xanthoma, same like that, there is a cholesterol accumulation, but in this case, place will be changed, it will be in skin and tendons, and it will be accumulated in the subepithelial. Connective tissue, but in the case of arteriosclerosis, it was being accumulated in the smooth muscle cells and macrophages and people of aorta, but this is in skin and tendons. So, these are some examples of liver accumulation. Now, we will discuss some examples of the protein accumulation. So, what is protein accumulation? I have just explained here. The first example is the droplets of proteins in proximal tubule. You know that in case of nephrotic syndrome, let's example nephrotic syndrome. When there, there is a nephrotic syndrome, that this nephrotic syndrome will cause the leakage of plasma proteins. Leakage of plasma proteins. Proteins will be leaked out in the urine. Will be leaked out in the urine. Proteinoid. It will cause proteinoid. It will cause proteinuria leakage of proteins plasma proteins in the uh, in the urine more than 3.5 gram 3.5 gram is normal but in this case it will be three more than 3.5 gram in 24 hours uh, let's uh, explain it again that what is nephrotic syndrome nephrotic syndrome is leakage of plasma proteins in the urine more than 3.5 gram over 24 hours and this case this loss of protein is named as the proteinuria to recover this protein, oh yeah, our body has some functions that this pro these proteins will be reabsorbed. Then we reabsorb in proximal tubule to recover. To recover our this which is the product syndrome, our body will uh, our body has function that will cause the reabsorption of these plasma proteins in the proximal tubule. But these plasma proteins may be the albumin, albumin. And this albumin, you know that is, it has a larger size, but it has a larger size, so it will not be reabsorbed. Instead of reabsorbed, it will form the droplets. It will form the droplets in the proximal tubule. What is this? I am going to explain again that 
In case of nephrotic syndrome, it will cause the proteinuria, loss of plasma proteins in the urine more than 3.5 gram over 24 hours. And because of nephrotic syndrome, our body has some functions like reabsorption of these proteins because our body needs these proteins, so our body will reabsorb these proteins in the proximal tubule. And these proteins may be albumin, you know that the size of albumin is much larger. So it will cause, uh, a proximal tubule will try to reabsorb the albumin, but when pro, uh, albumin will be, uh, go towards the proximal tubule, uh, they will not be reabsorbed because of larger size, so they will be accumulated in the shape of droplets of proteins. So these proteins are albumin, so droplets of proteins will be accumulated on the walls of the proximal tubule. So this is about the accumulation of plasma protein in the proximal. Next is the Russell bodies. What is Russell bodies? Russell bodies is nothing else. It is just the globulin proteins accumulation in the plasma cell. In the plasma cell. This is nothing else. This is just the globulin proteins accumulation in the plasma cell. How we can determine the, in the slide? Let's go to the next one there. There's the plasma cell. In the plasma cell, there will be just say, small little little drops, small little little drops on the plasma cells, like that. These will be the Russell body on the plasma cell, and these Russell bodies are the globulin proteins in the plasma cell. It's a histological structure. Sorry, what is the histological structure of droplets of proteins in the proximal tubule? I will try to explain. I am going to explain now. That's that. I suppose that this is our glomerulus, around the glomerulus there will be small uh, proximal tubule, distal tubule, around that. So in this case there will be droplets of uh, proteins like that, these will be droplets and the proximal tubule. It will show these like that. Okay. Because this is a glomerulus filtrate will go and this filtrate will uh, join with the proximal tubules, proximal, distal tubule, uh, proximal and distal tubules, but in proximal and distal tubule these will be back. A ribs or the ribs are not happen, it will cause droplets. So, this will show like droplets on the proximal to do in the histological side. So, this will be about the permeate accumulation in case of intracellular accumulation. Next is the glycogen accumulation. You know that in case of simple cell like that, the simple as nucleus, this simple cell has glycogen molecule, and the function of this glycogen is our energy production. It will give us energy by being changed into glucose. They will be changed into glucose and will provide us energy. But in case of glycogen accumulation, maybe some, maybe some, again, abnormal metabolism, abnormal metabolism will happen then these glycogens will not change into glucose. When they will not change into glucose, so it will cause the accumulation of these glycogens. These glycogens will be uh, accumulated in our body. They will cause the glycogen accumulation. Let's go to the diabetes in case of diabetes and gliders, maybe also some abnormalities that glycogen uh, uh, changement into glucose, glucose changement into glycogen will be disturbed, and because of distribution, there may be the glycogen accumulation. The next is, is the pigments. The first uh, pigments may be exogenous, they will come maybe uh, come from outside of the body, and maybe endogenous, which is already present in the body. Uh, and exogenous pigments come outside of the body and being accumulated in our body. The first uh, is, is important example is carbon. So what is carbon? In case of carbon, carbon will inhale in our body. It is being inhaled and it comes in the alveoli. Alveoli. When it comes in the alveoli, then in alveoli there are some macrophages because you know that carbon is dangerous for our health. It will act as a poison. When poison will come, then macrophages will be activated. Macrophages will attack on the carbon and they will engulf this carbon. After being engulfing, then this carbon with macrophages will be transported from uh, lymphatic channels, lymphatic channels, from lymphatic channels to the lymph nodes. But it will be accumulated there. It will be accumulated. Carbon will be accumulated there. What happens? Uh, that when carbon is being inhaled in the body, in the, it, will, it will goes in the alveoli. In the alveoli, there are macrophages. They will attack on the carbon. They will engulf the carbon. 
then carbon is being transported from lymphatic through lymphatic from lymphatic channel to the lymph nodes but in lymph nodes carbon will be accumulated so carbon accumulation will happen you know that what is the color of the carbon carbon coal dust in the product of coal dust its color is black so it will give the uh, lymph nodes of lens blackish color so lens will become black Lens will become like this, so let's suppose that this is the of the line, and then they will become black. Like that. Combination of carbon in the lens, and lens will become black. So lens will give the blackish, blackish color. So it is the histological side. So can determine the carbon on fly. Next is the endogenous pigments. Maybe the endogenous, the first one is lipophilion. First one is lipophilion. And still, the function of lipophilion has not been known. Its function is unknown still. What is the function of lipophilia? Still, it's unknown. But now we will talk about that how its accumulation takes place. It's been seen that this uh, lipophilia is old aging organ. It is present in old age patients. Old organs of old age patients. And when patient is old age, it may be accumulated in the organs. Examples of the liver and heart. So simple as that. The next part is that lipophilin tells us the signs of free radical injury plus lipid peroxidation. You know that it's, it's being seen uh, uh, lipophilin, sorry, lipophilin is the product of free radical injury. Product of free radical injury. When free radical injury will happen in the cell, then free radical injury will cause liver peroxidation. I have just explained in the previous lecture that liver peroxidation meant that destruction of the liver membrane, liver membrane will be destructed by the oxidation, the liver membrane will be destructed, then this lipophilion will be produced. Lipophilion pigment will be produced. When there is a more free radical injury, then more production of lipophilion. So lipophilion will be accumulated. When this is being accumulated, then we say that this is the free radical injury. It's a sign. It's a symptom of free radical injury because it is product of free radical injury. When we will see the lipophilia inside the cell, then it will be a sign of a free radical injury and liver peroxidation. And next part is that this is not in just the cell because the cell function is not been known. It's it in just the not itself. It's not in just the cell. But most important thing that this is an old aging organ, liver and a whole. Uh, it's, it is a sign of free radical injury and peroxidation. It's also simple. The next is the hemocytin. What is the hemocytin? Now we say that hemocytin is the byproduct of iron. It is being uh, derived from iron. But what is the function of hemocytin? Hemocytin is being found in the bone marrow macrophages. Bone marrow macrophages. What is the function of bone marrow macrophages? You know that in the bone marrow there is a production of red blood cell but these red blood cells are very very uh, long uh, more number uh, red blood cells are in more numbers so but we need small number in the blood we need small number in the blood bone marrow produce more number of red blood cells but we need small number of in blood and these extra red blood cells will be killed by these macrophages normally and in other case hemocytin is being, uh, being found in bone marrow macrophages and it helps to the killing of extra red blood cells which are produced in bone marrow because we need small amount of red blood cells in the blood. But what is the accumulation of hemocytin? This is how simple that it is being derived from iron and it is produced and it is found in the macrophages, bone marrow macrophages and helps in the killing of the extra red blood cells but in case of disease hemochromatosis chromatosis hemochromatosis this is the disease in which iron will increase when iron will increase then clearly that means that what is the byproduct of iron is the hemocytin so hemocytin accumulation will cause hemocytin will also increase and there will be accumulation of hemocytin but by which eyes by which process is iron will increase iron will increase because of the more absorption of iron more absorption of iron iron will be more absorbed from GIT and this is this may be because of the 
a new bond, in the early bond, that may be abnormal metabolism of absorption of the iron from GIT. So iron will be more absorbed, but iron will be more absorbed. So iron will increase, but iron will increase. And you know that and the byproduct of iron is the hemocyanin. When iron will increase, then hemocyanin will automatically increase, and you will get the accumulation of hemocyanin inside the cell. So this is the next thing. The next pigment, hemocyanin, it will get the intracellular accumulation of the pigment hemocyanin. The next and last pigment is the hemolanin. Melanin pigment and melanin, melanin pigment is a brown black pigment. It is a brown black pigment and it is produced by the skin cells named as the melanocytes. Produced by the melanocytes. And what is the function of this pigment? This pigment will uh, act as a secrete, it will save us from ultraviolet radiations as uh, such. So, what is melanin pigment? Melanin, melanin is a brown pigment, brown black pigment, which is produced by the melanocytes of the skin. And what is the function of melanin pigment? Its function is it will prevent us from the ultraviolet radiations of the sun. But there is also some keratino, basal keratinocyte cells. Basal keratinocyte cells in the skin. When melanin is being produced by the melanocytes, then there is also some nearby uh, in, uh, nervous cells named as the basal keratinocytes. These keratinocytes will cause the accumulation. They will cause the accumulation of melanin. So melanin pigment will be accumulated in, uh, in our skin, in our cells, so it will cause the uh, Accumulation of melanocytes. I, I will repeat it again that the melanocytes are brown pigment produced by the melanocytes. These melanocytes and what is the function of melanin is the secreting in that product prevention from the ultraviolet radiations. But with these cells, there are some also cells present named as the basal keratinocytes. These basal keratinocytes will cause the accumulation of melanin in our skin. So it will cause the melanin accumulation in our body. So it was both the intracellular accumulations uh, of some proteins, lipids, glycogenes, and pigments, the pigment will be exogenous, maybe endogenous, you see the example of exogenous carbon and endogenous, so we see the example. So this will be about the androcell accumulation. In the next lecture, we will discuss about the amyloid acid, what is the amyloid acid. So thank you so much, guys.